Yeah, Facebook's not letting me do it. So it's YouTube and Twitter tonight, no Facebook. Okay. How's it going, folks? I hope you're all doing well. Um, Keith here from Come On The Hoop Celtic. Hello to YouTube and hello to Twitter. Facebook, we're temporarily down tonight, so um, we're here to talk about the Livingston game tomorrow. Three o'clock kickoff at Celtic Park. I'm here with Michael again tonight. We would call it Friday Night TikTok. You could, we could call it Teak, whatever you want to say. I'm having a few cans of Guinness, folks. TikTok. So. Yeah, Celtic talk, whatever you want to call it. Um, you all good, Michael? Yeah, I'm all good. about to get the net connection, folks. If it goes, it goes, but we'll make the most of it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. We'll get, we'll get on for it. Well, obviously, it's been a bit of a weird week. We look back to the boys when he touching down yeah. what, what they got back into Glasgow. What was it? Friday night. And then the testing was done, and then they confirmed, they confirmed the results on Sunday. And then 13 players have to self isolate Neil Lennon and John Kennedy as well. So we have Gavin Strachan taking the reins at the moment. What do you make of the whole situation this week? You ever thought it was going to be a tour team? Well, kind of tour team playing. Well, the, the team that was out there on, on Monday night, it, it, the, uh, first of all, I have to commend a lot of the youngsters. They came on basically nearly late notice and they gave, gave it the best shot. Like They tried their best. It's the only one that I'd probably take a little bit of a criticism about would probably be Mikey Johnston. I think he was in the game, to be honest. Um, had it obviously flapped at the, the ball as well, like, but the other ones as well coming in, you know, a very young team seems to be a bit of a future there, like for a couple of them. Um, they just, they just need the proper leadership, the proper direction. Um, but the thing that I don't like about the situation at the moment is there's a few players out there on loan that we should have been calling back, it, mainly strikers. Um, we haven't got a the out and out striker there at the moment, and we've we call the midfielder back from um, I think it was a midfielder from, and we could have called a as a, 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 a floppy, could have called him back as a striker just to just get a bit of cover up up top for during the, the COVID period. Yeah, definitely agree with you 100%. Just two seconds. We could have called back Robinson. Do we we called Robinson back from Gillingham. That's what you're tr trying to say. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't remember the name. He, that, that was another midfielder, and like we have any amount of midfield. Um, usually, where we're struggling is uh, the defence, obviously, at the moment. And without Edward and Griffiths and no Yeti either, we we have nothing up top. Kamal is obviously out as well. So yeah, uh, so it'd be interesting. Uh, an interesting, interesting selection up top tomorrow. Definitely, hundred um, percent. Peter Lawwell's statement the other day. Well, interview. What do you make of that? As you said, as we said the, the other day, Keith, there was two speeches that we obviously had to pay attention to, and they, there was one obviously in the Irish government, and then there was one Peter Law, and I didn't know which one was worse, which one was the, the most of a cover up. Like Peter Law came out. A, Apologize straight away, but then he tried to defend it at the same time. I thought it was like it, he didn't really know what, what he was saying. Like he was saying, "Yeah, apologies, it was the wrong decision." But then he tried to back up. Then go. Oh, so I didn't think it was genuine. I thought it was a, a poor apology, a, a poor uh, excuse to the fans, and it just shows that there isn't much of a a, a connection for the fans. They, they just don't really give back. So, so uh, to be honest with you, I think it was an absolute disgrace the other day. You know, he just had his way of saying it. You know, Jerry McCulloch wasn't wasn't going. Um, out, obviously, it's his job to ask the the questions, cr club script script questions. It was just an absolute shocker. You know, I just don't care. I just don't feel like Lawwell has the heart anymore. There's obviously loads of talk of him meant to be taking over the Man United job as well. He's meant to be gone for the chip. Yeah. I don't know if it's true or not. United and, Ar United and Arsenal and all that, they have been after him for a while. 
because he's a money man. He makes he keeps money for the club. He, he doesn't spend. He budgets. He's what those type of clubs want. There's no, as you said, there's really no passion there. To be honest, I don't think he's not. To me, he doesn't feel like a genuine Celtic supporter. I think he's there as a businessman. He gets result. He got results for the last couple of years. He, he was banking on uh, a Brendan Rodgers thread, as the one of Celtic supporters said there recently. Once that fell apart, he was not that he was panicking. He just made the wrong decisions. I, obviously, he just tries to justify everything, and he doesn't listen to the people that got him in, in position. The people that funded that club since 1994 when we were on the brink. And he's just not giving back to the supporters. Mm-hmm. People are probably like, what the hell is he drinking out of? My little pony cool folks. It just keeps the, the Guinness, cl- um, I was going to say clear, <laughs> keep the Guinness cold. So, um, yeah. Keith, any chance of finishing the sentence? Because I have no idea how to the, the reason this season has gone absolutely shit. Um, yeah, the reason the reason why the season's gone it's gone this shit is because the the board haven't the board haven't really cared. There's been no clarity between the supporters and the, the board. There's no there's no relationship. The relationship has completely borne out this season, and the supporters are trying their best. The supporters are trying their best to uh, to engage with the board, sit down and have a chat with them. The board have been stubborn. They're coming out with all these stupid statements. It's irritating the fans. I know there's a portion of fans out there that believe that the board are doing the right thing. And then there's a portion of us that believe, you know, the more this goes on, that it's we literally just keep falling and falling. You know, um this season, this season could get, get worse and worse. And as I said in previous podcasts, Michael, it's the more this keeps going on, this less people will be renewing them books. Yeah, um, I, I mentioned that point there a couple of times in the, the last few pods, Keith, and a, a lot of supporters actually went against me. Um, a lot of them said you know, they've been season tickets for a long time, and they they said no, definitely be renewing the season tickets. But then, uh, then obviously Dubai happened, and a lot of supporters have to uh, change their mind all of a sudden. They've done a bit of a, a U-turn, a bit of a backtrack on it. Um, the only thing with the the season books. There's obviously a big waiting list, and people will be afraid that if they go off, if they give up their season book, they'd be at the back of the queue, and they have to wait for another uh, fall and sport year. Um, but um, you, you remember when Rogers came in, there was queues, there was people camping out to get the season book, and they sold out in record time for years. Did the, question I'm gonna ask, the question I'm going to ask you is? You were saying about obviously the ten thousand waiting list. I couldn't even say that word. But say them words the other night. Waiting list. I was stubborn in the words when I was saying it. Do you think the the board are feeling comfortable because they know that you have a waiting list? That's not bothering um, that much. That that they don't realise that. Like today, the Green Brigade went up with a banner saying wanted the Peter Lawwell banner, sixty thousand tickets reward and stuff. Look, a lot of people are putting them. I point the finger now saying, look, this is enough. He has to walk. I don't think he will walk. I just think he's stubborn. I think he will hold Neil Lennon to ransom till the end of the season. I know Lennon can make his own decision and say, he's not, Lennon, Lennon's going to be stubborn on this. He's going to take the money to the end of the season. I don't think Neil Lennon's going to get a job for a while. Um, He won't get a, good, a decent job. He won't get a good job offer. Um, Certainly not in England anyway. Um, he's he, as we said, we do love Lenny, right? But he, he he's his legacy at the moment. He's becoming a bit of a, a charlatan, to be honest. He's coming a proper yes man. Mm-hmm. He's not the way he used to be. He's not as engaged with, with as, as he used to be. He's like showing too much respect, nearly to basically would say to the enemy, nearly. Like unlike the way he used to he used to be like not um have kind of any of the the, the behaviors but like him spinning on the range of flags um uh, starting fights obviously the the, the fiasco uh, Ali McCoy to the sideline we don't see that fire on him now it's like he's a club man he'll do what he's told 
and that's going to be is the way he's going to be remembered now for the man that ruined 10 in a row he knew he had the chance to walk away and, and he's definitely going to be there to the end of the season um, and in terms of Lowell he, he it depends what way there with Desmond t- thinks about this one like um, I just want to bring up a, a um, an article that Andy Walker said on Sky Sports the other day he like obviously Andy Walker has been considered a bit of a a bit a bit of an enemy all of a sudden he's done a bit of a, a turncoat off, not really giving us as much praise but he made a great few points the other day in terms of getting us out of messes but Dermot Desmond got out of messes before like the, the John Barnes situation got in Martin O'Neill um, obviously then Stratton came in after that um, but we had some good, a lot of good years there then uh, Ronnie Doyle came in sorry well, sorry, Mowbray came in but then uh, Doyle came in after that uh, well, sorry, Lennon. Sorry, I'm getting mixed up with the way the manager yeah. Um Mowbray came in, Doyle came in, and you remember the amount of empty seats in Parkhead. Then obviously the two two game Rangers battle penalties, and Darren Desmond was sitting in the stand. And said this will never happen again. I will never see my club do this again. Um, and that's obviously I think we were five in a row at that stage. I said they were doing to the opposite. Uh, what do you need, lads? I need him. We need a manager. Give me a name, Brendan Rogers. Get him. Throw money at him. Give him what he wants. Got set the mess again. Would you think? Do you think it's going to be a case of? Do you think they're going to make a, a step like that where they look at someone that's actually not walking, or do you think they will be brave and bold and go for the manager and take them out the contract? Argument sake, it's just say all about the attraction. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like we could, we could be pre- perhaps going into next season. We still could be a 20,000 20, seats. With the way this pandemic could could go and spoil, you know, they might they might turn around. I know this is ridiculous. They might turn around and say, "Oh well, we're not letting you in the stadium even unless you're vaccinated." That's could happen. Was that Keith? They just broke up there. Sorry. They they could not. They might not let you in the stadium unless you're vaccinated as well. Like something like that might come into play. Things are going strange in the world at the moment. So look, we don't know what way that's going to go in terms of vaccines, whatever. Like it. We look realistically. We're looking at twenty twenty two before things start kind of open up again. Like there's no uh, twenty twenty one will probably be as bad, if not worse, than twenty twenty. Um, but obviously we're a bit more prepared for it this time around. But um, what I think the, they have to do, they have to reward the season ticket holder especially for being loyal, getting the virtual season pass. Supposed to be one of the most important seasons in the club's history, mm-hmm. and it was. It's basically w- one negative thing to the go follow them four to four behind Rangers, drawing points, um, the protests outside Sadly Park, then do, going to Dubai, coming back, we call Ballangoli, Monday. Balling, the fa- it's just Ballangoli at the start of the season. Yeah, it's, it's it's one thing after another. It's nearly like someone has put a jinx on us. And we need to, um, the fans need to be r- r- given all the money for the season books. A proper season book will cost for a virtual pass. So they have to be rewarded for that. I don't think they'll give a refund to the fans. I just think that they, they've pocketed this. I don't think they're going to come out and say, like, was it usually they send out the emails around March, and March they say renew the books? Yes, something like that. But they, I'm not saying they the season boost, there's never a chance of that ever happening. But what I'm saying is they they should really, really be subsidized next year to get the money in. Uh, what, what about, aren't short of money. What about a loyalty? I've talked about this before to one of the boys. He goes, What about a loyalty card? So what a loyalty card is basically is you say if you go and buy the new home jersey, you get next net you get points. You get a point system. So every time you spend anything on Celtic superstar or anything Celtic like you go in, you you get something in the half time, get a bit, and but boy, you get a point system. At the end of the se- at the end of the season, if you're been to every game and whatever, you're rewarded with a a ticket to a away game next season, or you're awarded fifty percent off the new home kit, something like that to give the incentive. Start, boy. But the price of a uh, the the merchandise and everything is ridiculous. Like the, that's what I'm saying. Bring this bring this point see, system in the, where I feel like you're getting something back. It gives you the initiative to spend in the club, keep the money flowing in, keeping the fans yeah. saying, "Oh Jesus, I'm at the buying that. I wonder what I'm gonna get." It's a bit of banter at the end of seasons. Jesus, how many jerseys did you get this season? 
Yeah. Some people can't afford it. You know, we're in a we are in a recession, yeah. but like it's about thinking something different outside the box, you know. No, you're you're correct, Royce. Right? Yeah, like there should like be Celtic, some sort of incentive, like you think about it, Celtic are not making the money they were before prior to this regards to the American market. We used to go over and play pre seasons all the time. Obviously, the Champions League qualifiers and stuff like that has halted us, and we keep going to Austria now. But like that's it, that's a mark is where we where we need to look at. Like next season, we could potentially look at going to America if this all slows down, if we get the approval. But it might be another stunt where they might turn around and say, Well, look at we can't afford to keep going abroad for no necessary reasons, playing pre-seasons. We took the chance in Paris. Yes, it was okay. We played a couple of games of in Paris. We played Leon, wasn't it? Leon and um, PSG. But is it a case that now we we, we shouldn't be travelling without unless it's a, a European qualifier? Um, well, they're going to have to seriously uh, think their moves in terms of travelling abroad after the other day. Like we'll see whether it's worth. They're gonna to have to like really look at every single move to see the benefits, so that they don't get um, they don't get. The four the four again. things that but four things that haunt the fans at the moment about the Dubai trip, right? You, just just one thing before you go on. Yeah. Like, um, I think it was the about the under 18s Yeah, we definitely want to talk about that in a couple of minutes. So um, we will get onto that for sure. So the first thing about Dubai is they went in the middle of a pandemic. That's pissing people off, right? Second thing is Julian shouldn't be in there. The tour thing is it's cost us, realistically, it's cost us a game. Forget about the league. It's cost us three points in a game. Yes, fair enough. The team went and played okay the other night. We got the tumble free kick. We weren't clinical. We weren't good. And the fourth thing that's hurt a lot of fans, and I've seen this mentioned a lot, quarter of a million was put into this Dubai trip. Quarter of a million. Yeah, no, it's. I think you've hit the nail on the head. It looked a good bit. Well, as, as I said to you last week, the, the goalie situation at the start of the season should have been enough to kind of like make the club think like this guy has done this on his own. And now they have uh, basically done this, the, the whole club has done this. Uh, but yeah, but Julian going, like, what was the point of that? There was literally no reason for him to be there whatsoever if he's there for four months. Um, they obviously a lot of pictures went out about the lads having beers. At the, look, I have no problem with people having a beer, or whatever. But they, after the, those pictures were leaked, then it was when you seen players at, at training. Like we don't know what's going on. Like it's a quarter of a million quid to for that trip, and that's basically like a good chunk of the the season ticket money that came in, and. They, they shouldn't even have been allowed go, especially back on the back of performances this season. Like, what were they going to get in Dubai? Heat training, and then it's it's like minus two degrees in in Scotland. Um, it was it was absolutely disgraceful. So it was. I don't think they should go to Dubai next year, definitely. And if they go to Dubai next year, I think we're going to be the same thing. Like. Um, they've changed the fixtures because the Scottish Cup has been cancelled. Um, well, postponed. They're going to play St. Mirren now on that Saturday, that game in hand. They're going to actually bring that fixture forward. Let's talk about the 18s. So, obviously, um, all these divisions below the Championship in Scotland has been cancelled. Putting our 18s on so for long. It's season. Yeah, putting the, 18, putting the 18s on for long is an absolute cheap and disgrace option. Like we're talking about, two, we're talking about a quarter of a million there put into the boy. It wasn't, it wouldn't cost them a quarter of a million to pay these 18 squad for the rest of the season. You're probably looking at what about 50, 60 grand max. For it was an absolute horrible decision by the public, especially coming days after the the, the grief and the the misery they caused by the Dubai trip. And they basically, they got and made another horrible decision like, again it's just one bad thing after another this season like obviously i don't even want to talk with ten row anymore we know it's gone like, maybe peace with that fair enough then um, lenny's gonna be there to the end of the season maybe peace with that and um, a lot of players are going to be there that we can get rid of afterwards mm -hmm. we start rebuilding yeah maybe peace with that but the thing is, is when you're making your peace with things 
it's just one more thing after another. It just keeps on coming. It doesn't be getting any better. And I, I don't. How can you do that with the under 18s This is our future. These guys should be getting so so much support. And right now is the perfect time for them to get in support, especially in a pandemic when they're in a bubble. And now they just they're just gone. Like. I agree with you. Um, someone said there, twenty five million it could cost up to get the um, season book. Two seconds there. I want to get to let the cat out, folks. So he's going to hear me. Do you want to hear a bell in the background? Last orders. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, all the season takes together is 25. Yeah. And, sorry, it's a, it's a JC. Um, yeah, like, you see that it's the amount of money that they get from this and they the season pass is what um, they were basically basically given this year so that's why I think they should be like um, there's some sort of incentive next year to of loyalty to the fans for the, all the money they've given especially in the pandemic and people weren't getting getting work or anything and then all of a sudden they're given that amount of money for a season ticket Right all this talk the last two days so um, a, a Scottish scientist came out and said the chances of the season is literally on thin ice for it to be continued on for the rest of the season. Null and void, null and void. I'm sick of hearing about null and void. What do you think make of it? Really, really, be honest, go straight. What do you think of it? If it goes null and void, I scrapped and they don't get the title. Yeah. And we can buy it the following season and win the title. I'd be considering that as starting at one again because that would be gone, given the title. Because we, it was us last season. Mm -hmm. we, I know it was a little bit later, obviously. Um, but realistically, they are so far. They're literally, literally double the points nearly. We were ahead of when we got in. It was in March or April. And it would be an absolute disgrace if we if this season was considered null and void and they didn't get the title. Now, obviously, I, even the thought of lifting the trophy obviously makes me sick. But um, we, there's no denying that they're the they're deserving champions at the moment. If the, the season is null and void, we have to be honest. About That's it. it. I I be honest with you. If they if it's null and void and they don't get the championship, it's a fucking disgrace because said they're so far ahead. I know we're gonna get one or two set of fans like, oh, will you cop on? Like mathematically, we could still turn it around. We could still like, come on. Is there evidence there? Looking at the shit we've been seeing all season from the team. To say that we can come around and turn us around, we're not the team that we were last season. So no, I'm gonna. I'm, the I, the I'd, was kind of on the wall there for the last season. So. I'd rather give them the title than have this null and void and have them moan and moan because it's gonna it's gonna stall the decision. It's gonna go to the courts. They're gonna have a big massive bitch about it, you know. And I'm not just as I said the other night on my podcast. I'm not worried about the championship. I'm not worried about the league now at this rate. I'm worried about the clubs around that are gonna are they gonna survive? It just goes into null and void. That's that's a, a great point actually. Um, it's it's going to be very hard for a lot of the, the Scottish teams, especially in the lower divisions as well. Like um, so you look, you think look the amount of fans like are like all to the, the other teams very low fan base. Um, Kilmarnock, they have a fan base there, but Rugby Park, you, when have you ever seen a full, apart from when they're playing Celtic or Rangers? Um, mm -hmm. The likes of Dunfermline, and um, maybe you've done D, the D United, not so much. Um, the likes of them clubs, and then obviously you go down to the lower divisions, the likes of Falkirk and a uh, Sterling. Th them, Ollie. Them, they're gonna, they're gonna find it very tough. That's what I'm saying. I think it. I think the null and void decision will kill the clubs. I think you're looking at about sixty percent of Scottish clubs will go under the belly. I think the likes of Hearts and Hibs stay up. You know the the bigger the bigger hitters, as you would call it. But it's it's worrying times, and that it, it maybe maybe it's a maybe it's a fresher maybe it's a fresh breath of air for Celtic to realise and say fuck right. We've no competition now in this league. Ourselves and Rangers. Who else can we even fit a twelve tier a twelve team league? Anymore, or do we have to try branch it out to keep other teams in it? Like we go for twenty tier. Well, here's another free as well. Like, um, if the, the season's null and void, do the club give back the season ticket money to the the fans, or what, what do they do with it? 
Yeah, I think they should because it's not a full season. You know, we're only we're only January. Well, it's not, it's, it won't even be considered if, if it's not void. It won't even be considered a season. So what you do, what you do is now, well, because obviously they're still going to make the money off the market and the television rights. What you do is you give the pro, pro rata, your pro rata the remaining games. That's the best thing you there do. Is that, there is that, I suppose. But like, again, like, I don't think they'd ever fork out any money to the fans at all. Even so, we were talking about the incentive plan. Like, like, we can talk all day, whatever, but the, the, those businessmen, they're not going to give out money for just for the fun of it. So, um, but like, what you could do is like the, the bigger clubs could like make some sort of pot. Like Celtic and Rangers get... I know Rangers obviously have their financial problems, but... They're probably a little bit better off than uh, most most clubs considering their their massive debts. Give some, some of the money to lower clubs to try and stay afloat. You look see at what, like, they, what they don't try to do in England in the, or the, the FA, FA. You see what they did in the FA Cup last week, um, especially the cup games. I think it was who was uh, Tottenham playing? It was a Marine or something, and they gave a hundred grand because he missed out on bills. Or um, there was some kind of raffle they did as well. Marina bought like a hundred tickets worth. It's just even like because we've the cup coming up again, the bigger clubs could give a little bit of money the games to just the lower teams, just save them a couple of quid, you know. That's it, and it's it's the same with League of Ireland. We don't know if there's going to be a League of Ireland next season, but all these club the way things are going, and it's the same with all sports. So that's the weird thing. Like regards to the Lone and Void, if it happen if it's called, and they don't get the championship. I think any Celtic fan that celebrates and bo- opens a bottle of champagne should be ashamed of themselves. It's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic because we don't deserve. We are absolutely horrendous this season. You just, I, I don't. I, I, if someone can come on and back up and say we are good enough to win this title, give me the reasons. Give me the reasons because I've had many people. I've done on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter, and people can't give me the general reason. They keep saying keep the fucking fate. Fate doesn't win you on the pitch. Fate might, might as well be a number one striker, you know. Oz and fate, you know, it doesn't do it. You know, it, we haven't had the fate. Yeah, it, it comes from the, the bottom to the top, and what we're generating, the so called culture. Neil Lennon keeps saying, "There's it's it's a shambles. It's an absolute shambles." The fans, the fans are not getting to see the players. Fair enough, we're in a worldwide pandemic. I would say the players are demotivated because they're not getting to meet the fans. Like you're not going, you're not going to the the hospitals, or not going into. You know, you're giving these donations, fair enough, but you're not in, you're not engaging with the fans that you see them on Celtic Way. They're signing the signatures. They're getting the pictures. Like that's that's the whole point of playing playing football. You're doing it the money and for the fans, as we all know, Celtic is the, one of the biggest clubs in the world. Our fan base, top five, question, no question about it. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and no matter what you go, you'll you'll always find a sad fan like so. Financially, obviously, we're not one of the best in the world. When it comes to that end of things, um, like when it, obviously when it just comes to the history of the club, we're a well-known club. We're pretty everywhere, like so. Um, like people say that some of the Premier League teams are bigger than Celtic. You, you, you can't really say that, like you know, it's, it's like the Real Madrid really probably the, or Man United are probably the biggest clubs. It's no doubt, but um, especially with the China and that, like. But like, you got when it comes to Celtic, you just see see them everywhere. Like, um, but the thing about the null and void thing this season, I, if the only uh, bottle of champagne I'd be popping for this season would be the season's actually over, so I can actually not have to look at it again. Basically, I can just let, let, let it go. Like the only benefit, um, the only benefit I'd say that, is if if it was null and void, it means that you can get rid of Lennon, get rid of Lennon, let's start getting get the right man in. Give it four or five months to re- to build the season, get ready for the Champions League qualifier. Um, I don't know where if see if it's none of it, and you don't crown Rangers as champions, what happens with the cha- What happens with the Champions League spots? Does Rangers get the Champions League spot? The fourth place Champions League spot? Does Celtic get the second place? You know, it's that's 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 this is what we're get, gambling with this season. The most likelihood, if it was in that situation, I, I'd be more inclined to say going on, on last season's uh, standings if the season was null and void, and then that would just open up a serious, serious situation. Would you do? Yeah, yes, would you yes, play? Would you do? A, would you do a two leg playoff? Um, no, I, I wouldn't. I just give it to them. I honestly would just give it to them. 
I, I, I don't think that there's many Celtic fans out there that would, that would disagree with me. Like, obviously, um, we have like a lot of Celtic fans that are say keep the faith, the hall of whatever. And look, I, I love that. Uh, look, more Celtic sports at the end of the day, faith will turn through. We'll always keep the faith that something uh, will happen. Okay, we're just coming. We're just coming off the back of a nine in a row, and like, we've had everything the last couple of seasons. Like we're quadruple uh, champions. We're just not used to losing like this, and we we have to we have to come back down to earth a little bit. We have a challenge now. Scottish football can get seriously attractive now, especially with this, this team, uh, Rangers. They obviously I, I don't want to say that they're not a new team, or whatever. Just like I'm, I'm being serious tonight, or whatever. Like, right, it's Rangers. They're back. There's it's a situation here now that, the, and it might make Scottish football that little bit attractive again. Instead of watching the team run oh, away well, the league, I think it ha- I think it has. Like you could like obviously where where we come from in Ireland, a lot of people are stuck into Man United, and Liverpool. But when you get that banter talk and walk where people are saying, "Oh Jesus, Rangers are coming for you, Keith," you know that's like it's. It's it's been too easy. Like it's been too easy the last couple of years, and people might turn around and say, "I disagree." But what about the eighties and nineties? But it's a different legacy of football. Football has changed massively in the nineties, even from the early two thousands to now. Football has changed. Everything has changed. F- style of f- football, players, nutrition, everything, everything. Fans, even the way the fans are, the bands from saying saying singing certain things. You know, even the way they communicate, they're not allowed. You know, it's it's all even they're even talking about the Premier League. They're not even allowed to hug each other for celebrating now. That's how bad it's gone. Yeah, and like, you look at the way the Premier League was after uh, post twenty twelve when it was just us basically. Like, you know, we scraped a couple of titles. That well, obviously not scraped, and we we won them pretty well in the end, but. Like it was a couple of seasons, especially around like up to January, and we were scraping there past teams. Like we were dropping points to beat the band. The football wasn't attractive. The fans Aberdeen, were there, like, Aberdeen, even was it? Was what was it? Aberdeen's um when Aberdeen season when Ronnie's fourth season, we it took us what until March to win the title. Yeah, but Keith, I, I was at one of the games against Aberdeen. We beat them nine nil, and it was just like it was ex- exhibition, and that was our closest uh, title challenge at that time as well. Like it was just it, Scottish football hasn't been good the last the last uh, ten years. Like obviously the last couple of seasons, obviously when they come back when Rogers took over, like there was obviously that season there was attraction. The like, Rangers were back in the league. We had a new manager. We we were looking to kind of uh, press forward in Europe, but there was money there behind us. That that was the great with the last four seasons. Um, but before that, it was just horrible. Like it was, if I missed the game at a weekend, I wouldn't really care. It's so about it, it was predictable, and it? it was predictable. That's the way it was, it was very Sorry? predictable. What was going to happen? Yeah, we, when we were losing, like in the last couple of minutes, and then you come back, get a goal. That was the only bit of excitement in that uh, game. So we opened that we went two 0 down and trying to get a comeback just to make the game a little bit, bit exciting. To be honest, definitely. Well. As I said, if it's a null and void, straight away go out in the market. Someone said there, Perescu. Perescu won't be a bad show. He's all right. He's won a couple of leagues, a um, couple of Champions League qualifiers. We need a European experience manager. This is what this is why we should be going for. Someone mentioned someone mentioned Hanover's manager the other night, Rolf Sutton. Yeah, I've seen that as well. Like obviously. Uh, is the one that still keeps popping up the whole lot as well. I was delighted that Pochettino got the PSG job the other day because I stopped people saying his name. Um, but like, again, like Eddie, Eddie Howe is the one that I would love most to see there. And like, if if there's a European challenge now, if we if De- Desmond does what he did before, like with the, with the Roger situation, I'd love to see that there. Like the other talk about Rooney coming up taking the job, like just like that's come on, Wayne Rooney. That's ridiculous. Then Roy, got the, people keep saying got Roy the job Keane as well. Anyway. It's like, Roy, it can't he, be Roy Keane. He got a two-year two-year deal at Derby anyway. He's not good enough. Like Roy Keane, what bit would you take Mick McCarthy? No, absolutely not. Because he, he's a failure at Apple Nicosia. No, no, it's not that he's a failure or anything. Like he's he's a one style of football and it's old style of football. It is it, he hasn't adapted to like even when he was over the when he was back over the Irish team. It was just pure defence and negative football, uh, and it was horrible to watch. Like, granted that he, um, he got a few decent results, like, like uh, Denmark and Switzerland, whatever, but it was just still horrible to watch. And he, he did have to set it as well. 
I had a trim today and it came out absolutely bojangled. So I was just saying, you know, I'll cut the whole thing off. It looks like I'm, I'm sitting out bleeding toilet at the moment. How, how bright these bleeding, these ring lights are. Poor, <laughs> that sounds so wrong. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just it's just the contrast of the screen, folks. Don't mind it. Um, Mick McCarthy, a, a short-term solution. If you were to get rid of Lennon tomorrow, get Mick into the end of the season. Feck it like you know. People might say I'm going backwards and that. I'm probably going to be... They're probably going to be shot for this one, but um, Strachan was a lot more easier to watch the other night than Lennon was to watch all season. Like Strachan was on the line, Bark, you know, looked a lot more energetic than Lennon has all season. I say, I don't, I'm not saying that he's the, a long term solution, but if Lennon was to go tomorrow, I'd nearly say Strachan take the job to the end of the season because he just looked a little bit more energetic, a little bit more passionate. Like if it's if it's a short term fix, yeah, okay, just give, see him see the rest of the season now. <laughs> we, they're probably they're, you know what Lawa is gonna do. He's gonna he's gonna bend over Kennedy and say, Kennedy, you're getting it. That's it. That's what'll probably happen. Uh, um, I'm 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 fearful at the moment about what's coming. Right. We'll talk about Livingston. We, uh, we, Livingston are unbeaten in eight yeah. games. They got a new manager, what, six weeks ago. They're playing well. Um Livingston always causes even Neil Lennon's second round back. He got a draw against them at Celtic Park. Yes, we beat them last season. We couldn't beat them last season. I think it was four 0 and then three 0 But um, then we, they were before the Rangers game. Uh, I brought us there two week, or there last week. That was the first away game we had lost since uh, we played Livingston the season before when they beat us two 0 That was the last away, game. and then obviously. We drew against them then uh, in the last day. Oh, sorry, the, just before the split, before the season was called. Uh, Edward scored the last minute, if you remember. But we have problems against Livingston, and Livingston are the informed team of the league at the moment. Seven games in a row. Oh, eight games. I, I, heard, I really, really believe that they could beat us tomorrow. And I know I hate saying this on a Celtic page. And people always say, oh, Keith, what are what, what you, what you, what you buzzkilling they going into that match day? Because the club is on their knees. The performances this season are not it, it out of tens is probably about a five out of ten. It's it's Celtic are very unpredictable, unpredictable. You know, sounds going a little bit fuzzy there, mate. So it's very unpredictable. Celtic are this season. Yeah, say so that they might like a little bit fuzzy there. It's like uh, it's buzzing for some reason. Whatever, it's like a what about, something. What about now? Nah, it's still pretty much the same. Oh, you're completely hand new. There you are. Sorry, folks. Technical issues here. Is, is that better now, is it? Is that all right? No, you can't get this. No, it, look, we'll get through it. We'll through it. Yeah, it's just um, the internet is poxy yeah, tonight. You made, yeah, you made a good point there um, in regards to like, um, being negative. It's hard to get positive, though. That's the thing. Like, I, I, don't, I don't like being negative going into games either. Like, but... At the same time, Livingston are playing very, very well. The pitch has always caused us the last couple of seasons. Um, like obviously, plastic pitches have always seemed to be a bit of a, a problem for us. But especially against Livingston, I'm uh, I'm not going to say that we're all going to get beaten tomorrow. I think we, we I think the pressure could could nearly be taken off us now at the moment because I think the players should accept that they've got a lot of work to do. Just go out, play the game. Don't be like uh, panicking. Just go out, play football. Just play for the results. Well, we're, we're, uh, play the games. we're playing them at Celtic Park tomorrow, then we're playing them the macaroni on Wednesday night. So, <laughs> two legged affair, you could say, you know, two legged affair. Um, it's, I just think it's very unpredictable because we're, we're playing poorer teams than Livingston this season at home and we, f we fecked up. You know, it's, but, it's just been absolute carnage. So if I will not be surprised tomorrow we're going in nil all at half time and we score and then we drop points like what we did against Hibs. Now Hibs are Hibs are a good team, no question about it. Jack Ross had them organized, they took their chances. Hazard just I don't know what's with his handling when it comes to set set pieces. He, he's a bit of a flapper, all right, yeah. Like even the way he went for that ball the other night, it's not he never even gave himself a chance to kind of like like his hands were like, like doggy paddling in the pool or something. Like I didn't know what he 
just get a palm and I just scoop it away. What about Duff, what about Duffy's so called clearance? <sighs> Look, I don't think anything's going to be. Yeah, you don't think he's going to be one player that's going to be yeah uh, remembered. Do you think he's going to be remembered for as a hey that he was another flop? Like he's going to be up there with probably the biggest flops because of the hype that, about him when he came in. Um, which I want we talk about prediction for tomorrow. All right, sorry, yeah, uh, team prediction. Um, has a uh, hazard and goal. Jeremy Fing Pong right back. I I don't have to. Is Taylor in isolation? Is he? Um, I don't know. There's a few coming back on Sunday, I believe, but I don't know if they're back tomorrow. So I, was he there on Tuesday? I don't know if he was in selection on Monday. Sorry, I don't Monday. actually don't think he was. Um, lacks all, lacks all let back then. Beaton is available. Um, Beaton and Welch tomorrow. That sounds sounds a bit weird. Beaton and Welch because okay. Duffy was ab- Duffy was absolutely poxy the other night, and I know we keep back backing him, backing him, but his head's not. And he was he was a blow blow in for that game, and that's the truth. Um, the midfields: Sorrow, Turnbull, and McGregor. Um, who'd you play? Who'd you play in the wing? Do you play Mikey Johnson again? Do you start with them? No, you start. I think start, think it's start with Dan Well, you're missing one one more player in midfield there, so right Taylor Taylor's good to go. Sure. Taylor was good to go yeah. anyway. So Taylor, I play Taylor left back. Um, <sighs> yeah, I'll give you I'll give you my yeah, idea. Try and think. I'm going to leave the goalkeeper. I'm, I'm going to leave the goalkeeper position for a second. Uh, I'm going to leave that the last. Um, we have no uh, forwards. We um, have no forwards. I was the back four. I'm going to go. put Roger in. True, but midfield. Yes, that's where I'm, I'm, I'm going to get to me midfield in a second. Uh, we're going to go back as far as I'm going to lack salt and for impound on, on the, the full back positions. I, I genuinely think he's going to stick with Duffy and I think he put Welch in. Like, uh, obviously, but I think beat on is probably a little bit, he's, he could be a bit of an outcast in the team at the moment, considering what happened at Ibrox. So I think he'll stick with, well, uh, with Duffy for that reason. Obviously, with Julian being out and Irv isolating as well. So that's me back four. In midfield, I think he'll stick with the diamond pattern. Uh, Obviously, go Sorrow, Tumble, um, McGregor, and Rogic. I'm going to throw in there up top. Um, obviously, Johnson had a bad game the other night, but I don't think he's got much of an option but to play him. And I, I, I'd love to see him start in belly up front as well. I think he, you give him a shot. Uh, in goals, um, I'm going to make a bold prediction on this one. I'm going to say doing for the simple reason that Harper has had a couple of flaps. He's back from Ross County. I, I think he could g- give him a shot. He'll do it. Because obviously the goalkeeper situation all season has been, yeah, he, he's from Ross County. He's, he was on the bench the other night as well. I wouldn't be half surprised to see him goals tomorrow. Dylan, Dylan's played a few so, times at Celtic. He's only played senior time once. But um, but you might... Yeah, I just I, just, I think with the, the way he has it comp- uh, con- conduct himself the other night, I think um, he... he we might have going to have another four season. I, I don't. I wouldn't. Back, I wouldn't back against it. So I'm going to say do him tomorrow. Wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. Um, put Roger in the midfield. I would just slap the whole midfield up and put one striker. Regardless of striker, who do you play? You like you go with Harper again, or do you? Do you bring Dembele in the mix? Young Dembele. He's not even a striker. He's a midfielder. You know, it really like. It's tough to say. Bilbe- Bilbao or B- Bilbo, sorry, says um, no chance. Is that for, for Doolin, is it? We'll have to see. What's it mean, no chance? Score predictions for tomorrow. Um, fucking hell, it's just because everything going on at the moment. I'm going to fancy... Take a one nil. I'm going to fancy 2-1 tomorrow. I'm gonna say one 0 I'm gonna fancy. Score, t- having a face up. I'm gonna fancy Callum McGregor score a nice, a nice one from out of the box, and I'm gonna fancy um, a bit of a strange one. I'm gonna fancy Welch to score a header tomorrow. I'm gonna say one 0 I'm gonna say sorrow. No, I think sorrow will be deep okay. tomorrow. 
I think Sora will be deep. He, well, it depends on if, he, if he's going to stack the whole midfield. Give Sora more shot. of a bit of a play. He likes a shot, too, does. He does, and he had a couple of shots the other night as well. He helps keep it done well. Yeah. Ah, it's just... So, um, obviously, with Turnbull, he, he could be here a lot at home, so he can, but... Uh, so he'd be obviously uh, on the mark as well hopefully uh, for sure he's going to be our player of the season no doubt about that as well um, but uh, yeah, I would say I'm going to be sorry Celtic won right folks we're going to leave it there because the, the the coverage between the both of us has been absolutely poxy and I just want to I just want to apologise on the, for the both of our behalf that the internet is laggy tonight it's great having Mick on I, I appreciate his patience going through listen to us when it's lagging been great, but um, I will be back on tomorrow night to have a chat about the game after it. Now, Facebook currently has me suspended at the moment, so we won't get our Facebook viewers and the comments from Facebook. It'll be just Twitter and YouTube for the next week until I get I get out of Facebook jail. That'd be the best thing to say. Pathetic. It was a pathetic picture. It was absolutely shocking the picture they, they banned me for. Absolutely shocking, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try appeal it because it just delays the proceedings. That's live, that's live. Definitely. Well, look at folks, I'll be back tomorrow night. Um, as I said, we'll probably, hopefully, get the internet be a bit better from both sides. And I want to say thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Um, Mick will be back, hopefully, maybe Monday or Sunday night, whenever he's free next. He'll be back Sunday night. Yep. If he doesn't have a bad, bad hangover. <laughs> see, see how the tunes, we might get the tunes out, see how, see how we get on. We'll see what the see what the situation is, but um, I'll be heading over now. I need to Instagram for a few minutes, but take care, folks. All the best. Take care, Mick. God bless. See you all, all tomorrow. Best,